If you want to learn how to make Roblox UGC accessories, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to be doing a beginner tutorial step by step on how to make Roblox UGC items. Don't forget if you find this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any problems, comment down below. But let's get started. We're going to want to start by going to Roblox Studio. As you can see, I've got it open here. And basically what we're using Studio for is to get the Roblox character into Blender, where Blender then we can go and model the accessory around the Roblox character. So now we're in Studio you want to go up to avatar and then you want to go to rig builder and then in rig builder i just like to use a block avatar but you can use any of them really and as you see here i now have a block avatar and what you want to do is click on it and then on the right make sure you have the properties panel open if you don't go to view and go to properties make sure that's open and also make sure explorer is open it should be here on the right and then you want to go down in properties and then you want to come down to transform origin position make sure it's not the pivot make sure it's the one under transform and change the position to zero comma zero comma zero and now this will move your uh, your rig to the middle i'm going to delete the spawn here so you can see clearer it is spawning now you know right in the middle of the, the workspace and now you've got it in the middle. Make sure you do this, by the way. If it's not in the middle, when you go to Blender, the NPC will be like flying around in the void, which you don't want. But anyway, let's go here and uh, click on it. And it should light up in the Explorer saying rig. And then you want to go right click on where it says rig, come down to export selection. And then it'll come up with like a file explorer. So save it on your computer somewhere where you'll remember it. Now we've done that, we're going to go to Blender. If you don't have Blender, I'll show you how to quickly install it. To download Blender, you literally just have to go to blender.org. I'll link it in the description and it should look some Think like this it says blender 3.6 lts and then you just click download download blender 3.6 lts and then here it just shows you know the versions you want to install it on to click and then just i'm going to do download blender and done now let that download for a bit and then in your files it should say blender 3.62 whatever version you've got of course if you're watching this a few months in the future it'll be a different version that's not a problem but double click on it and then it'll come up with uh, the blender setup wizard so just click next i accept next next install and then just wait for it to install it's that simple and then when it's done it should uh, say finish and it's that simple now you want to load blender up so it should look something like this and to move around you just press down your scroll wheel and move your mouse and it'll kind of like move around like this to zoom in scroll forwards to zoom out scroll backwards that is the simple movement you will want to know here you can also press and hold shift whilst also pressing down your scroll wheel and then moving your mouse to move around like this. And with all these movement options, you will soon be able to get the hang of moving around the scene. I'm actually gonna go and make sure you've got the selection box selected up here. And we're gonna drag over everything and press delete. Okay, so now that's everything gone. And now we're gonna go and do, um, put our dummy in. We need to put our dummy into Blender here. So we're gonna go file, import, wavefront obj, and now locate in your files where you saved your dummy. And it should say here, as you can see mine, I've got dummy obj and dummy mtl. So basically when you export from Roblox, it just gives you two files. But what we want here is the obj. So you can click on it and then go to import obj down here and it should import just like this as you can see here we have our dummy and you can see it is a bit glitch you've got this like hitbox part which you can see it honestly doesn't matter this dummy isn't important for your item it's literally just so we can get the proportions right but anyway let's go here and we're going to start making our very first item so now i've already explained the movement uh, you should be able to get the hang of it and we're going to start by inserting here a cylinder so we're going to do shift a and it pops up this add menu and there's loads and loads of options. We just want the mesh one. So this adds an object to our scene and we pick which one we want and we want to do the cylinder. So click on cylinder. As you can see now, it brings in this cylinder into the, the, the workspace. But before you click anything here, go down to the bottom left corner where it says add cylinder, pop it up and where it says vertices, we're gonna want to click on it and then type 14 and then press enter. And as you see, that basically changes the amount of edges on our cylinder to 14. So you can see if I press and hold here and like slide it, you can see that it slides and it adds a lot more edges. But 14 is the perfect number because if you have too many, it will lag. And UGC actually has requirements where you have to have only a certain number of vertices on your entire model. So make sure you keep everything low where you can. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it up to the head because we're gonna be making a mask. To do this, I'm gonna press G. And what G does is it actually moves your object. And as you see, as I move my mouse here, it kind of moves it around. But before I click anything, I'm gonna press Z. 
and this will move it up and down on that Z axis. So in Blender, you have three axes. You have X, Y, and Z. You can see here the red line on the floor is the X axis. The green line on the floor is the Y axis. And you can't see the Z, Z axis, which is the blue one, but you can also see it up here, all the axis things. And you can see Z, X, and Y if you forget. And you can see if I do G to move and then Y, it only moves along the Y axis and X moves only along the X axis. So basically that, that is how it is, but it's pretty simple. For this, we're just gonna be working on the Z. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press S to scale. And we're gonna scale it down a bit. We, we don't want it too small, because as you can see right now, it's smaller than the head. We want it to be just a bit bigger than the head, something like that. So as you can see here, it's just a bit bigger than the head. And of course, to confirm, it's left click. So do S and then move your mouse and then left click. And yeah, we're gonna move it down again a bit. We're gonna move it down and we want it to be so it just sits just like that. And this is pretty simple so far. All we've been doing is working in object mode and moving around these very basic shapes. Now it's going to get a little bit harder, but trust me, I'll guide you along and it will not be that hard. So the next step is we want to add a bit more detail because right now we've only had a cylinder. You can do this sort of stuff in Roblox Studio. What we're going to do now though is we're going to get a little bit more technical, but don't be scared. It is not actually that hard. I'm just getting you prepared for what we're about to do. So make sure you have this selected by clicking on it, this uh, cylinder. And now we're going to go and we're going to press the tab key on our keyboard. As you can see now, everything's got little golden like dots on it. Um, and these are called vertices. These are basically what make up your entire model. And what we're going to do now is we are going to do Alt A and it will deselect them all. Alt plus A. Press those two keys at once and it will deselect them all. Pretty simple. But what we're going to do now is we're going to basically make it so that these edges are more round and smooth. And we're going to do this with a bevel. So what we're going to do is we want to select these top vertices. You can simply do this by getting the selection box out and dragging a box over them. And you can see now those ones are selected. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by using Alt and then click. So you can click on a vertice to select it and it kind of goes gold. And then you can do what you want with that vertice. Similar to before, you can move them with the G key. So you can like move it. You can move it on the Z axis, the Y axis, the X axis. What we want to do here is we want to move them all. And an easy way to select them all is you can either select one and then hold shift while selecting them all, all the ones you want to select. Or if they're in like a circle like this, you can hold alt and then click the line you want to select and it will click the whole line and you've got them all selected. But anyway, now that you've got them all selected, you can either do it this way with alt or you can select one then do it in a circle or you can drag a box. What we want to do now is we want to do Control and B at the same time, and this will bevel it. As you can see, it kind of does this really nice bevel. And basically, what we want to do is we want to bevel it something um, that, that looks good with the, the kind of like mask. Um, so what we want to do here is I'm going to scroll forward to make this have more steps. And as you see, if I scroll up, it adds more of these kind of these steps to the bevel. Or you can scroll down and do a basic one. But you see, this looks bad. So you scroll up. I'm going to go three here, uh, something like that. And as you see, it's starting to follow that shape of the head more. And I'm going to show you here exactly how you can actually make it so that it um, follows the shape of the head perfectly. So we're going to press one on our number pad. The number pad is basically where there's some numbers on the right of your keyboard, but not every keyboard has a number pad. So don't worry, if you don't have a number pad, to get into this same side view, you can just use the thing up here and click on the, the face, like click on like, like Z will go the top one, minus Y goes there, X there. So you can just use this to kind of like snap onto the faces in the top right corner, or you can use your number pad. One on your number pad, three on your number pad, or seven on your number pad. We're going to use one here to go into the front view. And now what we're going to do is we're going to press Z on our keyboard board and it'll switch to wireframe you can also do this up here by um, you see these like four different orbs these kind of balls there are four modes the only ones we need here are solid mode and wireframe mode and the wireframe is what we want to switch to so this is solid mode this is wireframe mode so you can just change it up there in the top right corner and basically you can see here the head you can start seeing the head through our current model and because these two um, meshes are separate so to leave edit mode edit mode you can use tab and now you can see i can actually select the dummy separately and do tab to go into edit mode again and you see they're separate so if I go back to uh, edit mode here by selecting our hat we're working on then doing tab to go into edit mode you can see if i drag a box it only lets me move stuff from this mesh that we have selected and not the um not the um the dummy so what we're going to do here is we're going to press one to go into our number pad of course then we're going to do z to go into wireframe or we can just change up here in the top right corner and then we're going to use the drag box the select box up here and drag it over all these top ones then we're going to do g to move and then z to move down and as you see here i actually want it to follow the shape of that head a bit more because before it was up here and there's no point we want it to be tighter to the shape of the head so we can go something like that and now you can see that it's tight and snug and we're actually going to want to do something similar here with the bottom. So I'm going to go and I'm actually going to move this um, down. So select these vertices, just do the drag box. And then we did do G to move again and Z to move down. Move it just below the head here. Then we'll move it a bit more down. 
There we go. Now we're going to do what we did before. And we're going to do control B to bevel. And it should save how many steps you did before. So it shouldn't go back to a default bevel. It should, you know, do what you did before. But I'm going to go and just copy what I did before anyway. Do um, a four step bevel. And we're going to go something like that. And bevel about there. So there's no clipping. If you go too far, it's going to clip. And we don't want to see any of the head here. So we're going to go there and then left click. As you see now, we have actually quite a cool mask. It's still only a very basic item, but still there is still stuff we can do with this, which is what I'm going to show you now. As you can see, you can actually see all the individual faces here. So there is actually a way we can fix this without adding a load of loops. So you can see right now it's got this like low poly look. This is called low poly, where it's this flat sort of, you can see each individual face look. What we're going to do is we're going to select it here, go into edit mode with tab, and then we're going to do A on your keyboard to select everything. And then we're gonna go up to face here and shade smooth. And as you see now, this thing looks really smooth and really nice. However, there is one problem where it's kind of got these shading errors on a simple mesh like this, you can't tell, but it does cause a few shading errors doing this. So to fix this, you want to go on your on the right of your screen, go down to this little um, green triangle called object data properties, click on it, and then go down to the normals tab, click on that and then tick auto smooth. And basically now this just kind of manages the smoothing a bit better and changes it so that faces only get smoothed if they're on a certain angle. And as you see, that angle here is um, here. So you can change this, you can slide it. And you see if I turn it lower, it smooths less. And I can turn it up to smooth more. So that angle you want to increase. And it depends on the style you're going for really what you want to smooth it by. I usually do about 50, but on a model like this, it doesn't affect it that much. But anyway, we're gonna do a few more things here. What we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna go and add some holes for the eyes. To do this, we are going to use the knife tool. I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna do that now. However, first, I want to actually make it so that there's a texture on this so I can see where the eyes are on the dummy because Blender basically hides the textures in solid mode. However, I'm gonna show you how to, to show them. Because this mask's here, we can't actually see the face. So we're gonna go over to the right here in collection and click the little eye next to our cylinder to turn it off. And this should just hide it temporarily. And then we're gonna go up to here in the um, shading properties and click this arrow down. So click the arrow down, it should say viewport shading. And then now what we're gonna do is where it says color, change it to uh, from material to texture. And now you can see we actually have the face showing on our dummy. Now you can actually go back to the cylinder here and turn it back on. And as you see, it does hide the face. However, now we know exactly where the eyes are when we turn it off. So we know roughly where they are. I'm gonna press one on my number pad here and like zoom in. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out these holes. So I, know, I don't need to remember roughly where they are here. And then I'm gonna go show my dummy, uh, show my cylinder. So turn it on again. And now I'm gonna go click on it, go into edit mode with tab. And then over here, there's the knife tool. Click on that. And now you've got this knife. And basically when you click, it'll start cutting. So I'm gonna click here in the middle. And then I'm just gonna cut. You can either cut just anywhere or you can cut vertice to vertice. I'm going to do a bit of both here. I'm going to try and keep my cuts along the edge. But I'm basically just going to go here and cut kind of like one hole out, something like this. You will see. I'm going to go something like this, 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 and there we go. And then I'm going to press enter when it's complete. And as you see, that has completed a nice cut. Now I'm going to change back to the box select tool um, on the left. And we're going to go up here to these three options. So you see right now it's got this little left one selected, which is the, the vertex mode. There is also edge mode. When you click it, you see it goes to edges and then face mode where you can see it goes to faces. So basically what we want to do here is we want to go to this one at the end, face mode. And this is because we want to select the faces that we want to delete. So as you see here, we want to delete these faces. So I'm going to select one, then hold shift, select, and then keep holding shift and select them all. You see, if I don't hold shift and I click one and then click the other, it only clicks one. So hold shift to select multiple at once. And then you want to select all the ones you want to delete. And you see here, I've selected them all. And then you literally just press the delete key on your keyboard and then delete faces. And as you see now, it's actually got this really cool mask. So now you can see we have a nice mask, which has some holes around the eyes. And of course, using other techniques here, you can make other stuff from this. Like you could add some little ears or something. You know, you could use a cube and then you could just kind of like add these cubes on, you know, make it an ear, something like this. This is not a part of the tutorial. I'm just giving you an idea of the sort of stuff you can create. You know, if you want to make some little cat ears, something like that, and you can then duplicate it and put it over here. Yeah, this is an idea if you wanna make a cat mask, for example. But anyway, um, that's about it for the model. Nice, simple mask. But what I'm gonna show you here is how we can also texture this. This is quite a simple texturing method, but it's perfect for beginners to get great results without much complexity. As you get more advanced, you'd want to cut methods like this out, but we're gonna be using gradient palettes. There's an excellent one made by a channel called Infenzia. This guy, he made this really cool color palette, which I'll show you how you can get now. So over here on my Discord server, you can basically see the um, Infenzia color palette for texturing. 
So, you know, if you want to check his channel out, it's Infenzia. And you can find it on Google. However, I just put it on my Discord server for easy access. My Discord server is linked in the description of the video. So just join up and go to the resources channel here. And also you can share your creations and get some feedback on your models in my Discord server. So yeah, come hang out. But anyway, to download it, just click on it, right click, and then save image. And then save it on your computer. And then we're going to go back over to Blender. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our mask model. And then over on the right, we're going to go off object data properties. And we're going to go over to this little checkered orb, which is the materials panel. Then click new, and this will create a new material assigned to our hat. And then we can go over to where it says base color. Click on the little yellow dot here, and then change it to an image texture. And now where it says image texture, just underneath, click open. And I'll find where you saved the color palette on your PC. Then open image, and as you see, it applies it here. And because I have texture passed through on, you can see it. If you didn't turn that on, and you saw material, it'll look the same. But don't worry, that it still applies, you just can't see it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the UV editing tab so click on uv editing just over here and as you see it has this like different view now where you've got um, your model on the right and this like checker checkerboard on the left and this is called um, the uv this thing on the left and basically now you can see if we go and select our hat and go into edit mode with tab again then do a to select everything it will bring up our uv on the left and you can also see the texture if you don't have a texture applied that won't be there but because we have one applied like i just showed you before you can see that it has the uv here and basically we're going to press one uh, whilst hovering over this right hand side um, on our number pad and we're going to go and we basically got the the hat here and with everything selected so again press a to select everything and then do u and this gives you all the list different uv modes but you want to do project from view and as you see here this actually projects our model onto the uv map and this basically shows where the colors are going to come from and then we're going to highlight the shell here on the left hand side and do s to scale and scale it down to something like this and now whatever color you want your mask use g to move it and move it over whichever color you want so you might want a purple mask and as you see here if i change the mode over here on the right to uh, go down here and turn it to texture pass through you can see it's a purple mask and we can change it again by just doing g to move and you can make it bigger so that you get a harsher gradient and you can see here you can have loads of different colors you might just want a sleek black one that looks really cool if you want just like a ninja mask or if you want a green mask or if you want a blue mask you know that sort of thing this is how you do it so i really hope you found this tutorial helpful and that's about it for this tutorial. However, this is not the end of your UGC journey. There's still so much you need to learn. And I'm going to give you a few different videos now that you can choose whichever one you want to watch, which will get you even closer to becoming a full-blown UGC creator, making millions of Robux a month. The video on the left will actually show you how to get your models out of Blender and turn them into an accessory you can wear on Roblox. So check that out if you want to learn how to wear this in your own games. Or on the right, you can watch a video on how to apply to Roblox UGC and how to get accepted to become a UGC creator who can upload on the catalog. That's about it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I see you in the next video.